Hi, Bobcats. Our objective for this video is to look at the relationship between the moles, volume, temperature, and pressure of a sample of gas. Uh, this relationship is given by something known as the ideal gas law. The ideal gas law says PV equals nRT. Some of my students in the past have called this PIVNERT to help them remember the equation. There's a new variable or a new uh, actually constant in this equation, and that is known as the ideal gas law constant, R. R is 0 0.0821, and then it has really strange units, liters times atmospheres divided by moles and divided by kelvins. Um, that using this numerical value for R is going to fix what units we have to use for all of the other variables in this equation. N has to be in terms of moles, P has to be in terms of atmospheres, uh, V has to be in liters, and temperature, as always, must be in Kelvin. When we were doing combined gas law type problems, P and V didn't matter as long as they were in the same units on both sides. But when we're doing the ideal gas law and we're using this ideal gas law constant value of 0 0.0821, we must um, use these units for our variables. When you're working a homework or a quiz or a test question and you're going, uh-oh, there's a bunch of numbers here, which equation should I use for this? Well, the ideal gas law is the equation that you're going to use when there is one set of parameters. What I mean by that is they give you one pressure, one temperature, um, one amount of gas, and they ask you to solve for the volume. The combined gas law is what you're going to use when you have two sets for all of those numbers. You start off under one set of conditions and you end up under a different set of conditions. So you have a T1 and a T2, a P1 and a P2, a V1, and you're asked to find that V2. Now unit-wise, if we're going to compare and contrast these, temperature is the same in both. And temperature is the big, um, big important one you got to make sure you get right. Uh, temperature has to be in Kelvin when you do either one of these. So make sure uh, you do that conversion if you're given a temperature in Celsius or any other unit. Um, in the ideal gas law, because we're using a particular value for R, uh, the units for pressure and volume and N are fixed. We must use liters, atmospheres, and moles. But when we're doing the combined gas law, um, pressure and volume can be in any units as long as we're using the same units on both sides of the equation. As our first example problem with the ideal gas law, let's find the volume of exactly one mole of an ideal gas at STP. So the ideal gas law says PV is equal to nRT, and we're asked to solve for V. Well, right now, V is multiplied by P. So to get V by itself, I need to divide by P. And if I do it to the left side, I better do it to the right hand side. So if I clean all of that up, I'm left with volume is equal to nRT over P. So now I'm going to make my variable list, see what numbers I have for each of these things. I need a number for N, a number for R, a number for T, and a number for P. Well, R is 0 0.0821 liters times atmospheres times moles and or divided by moles and divided by kelvins. So that's fixing what units all of these other things have to be in. Well, for N, it says we have exactly one mole. So we've got one mole. And because it says exactly, this value one has an infinite number of significant figures. For T and P, well, what we know is that we are at STP, standard temperature and pressure. So our temperature is zero degrees C, but we don't want to use Celsius. We've got to use Kelvin, so that'll be 273 Kelvin. And our pressure is standard pressure, which is 760 torr, but we can't use that. We've got to use atmospheres, so that's going to be one atmosphere. So now if I come over here and plug everything into my equation for V, 
For n, I'm going to plug in one mole. For r, 0 0.0821, and I'm going to skip writing all of those units because I'm running out of room. Uh, for t, I'm going to have 273 Kelvin. And for p, I'm going to have one atmospheres. If I'd written in all of those units for r, um, you would see that everything cancels out really nicely except for liters. And if you run those numbers through your calculator, 0 0.0821 times 273, you end up with a very familiar value, 22.4 liters. This is the number off the radiation sign, because on the radiation sign, we said that the volume of one mole of gas at STP is 22.4 liters. So now you see where that number came from. For our uh, second example of the ideal gas law, this asks how many grams of helium are needed to fill a parade balloon, which has a volume of 25,000 liters. Typical conditions for the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade are around 40 degrees Fahrenheit and one atmosphere. So um, this is a little tricky because our ideal gas law says PV is equal to nRT. And there is nothing directly in this equation about mass, right? Because grams is mass. We are looking for a mass. But the good news is there's something in here that's very closely connected to mass, which is n. n is the number of moles. If we know the number of moles of the gas, we can use the molar mass of helium from the periodic table to convert to grams. So basically, we need to solve this equation for n. So n is our unknown. So I'm going to start making a variable list down here. p equals, v equals, n equals, r equals, and t equals. All right, the pressure is about one atmosphere. The volume is given as 25,000 liters. The n is our unknown, what we're trying to find. R is point, whoops, there's a zero there, 0 0.0821 liters times atmospheres divided by moles in kelvins. And the temperature is 4.4 degrees C. Don't stop there, we need to add 273. And so that's gonna be about 277.4 Kelvin. All right, so um, to solve this equation for n, I need to divide both sides by r and t. So that's going to give me PV over RT. For pressure, I've got a value of 1 atmosphere. Uh, for volume, I've got 25,000 liters. And I really should be plugging units in here. It's just I'm running out of room because of the weird units on R. So I'm skipping that. Um, we did check that all of our units were good over in the variable list, right? We've got atmospheres, liters, and Kelvin. So we should be good on all of our units. Also down there in the denominator, I've got temperature of 277.4. Kelvin. All right, so if I run that through my calculator now, I've got 25,000 in the top. In the bottom, I've got 0 0.0821, and then I'm also dividing by 277.4, and that's giving me a number of 1097 or 98, if I can round that off, uh, moles. Now I need to convert that to grams. Well, if I have 1098 moles of helium, radiation sign has the number one with moles and molar mass with grams. And the molar mass for helium is about four grams. So if I take my 1098 and I multiply it by four, I end up with uh, 4,391 grams. Sig fig wise, it looks like we can keep about two sig figs. So that would be roughly 4,400 grams 
of helium or 4.4 kilograms. So our objective was to learn how or to examine those relationships between moles, volume, temperature, and pressure in a sample of gas. Uh, we learned that's the ideal gas law, PV equals nRT. Now, it's really easy to watch me work these problems. Uh, you probably should stop and go back and practice these problems yourself and make sure you can work them looking just at the statement of the problem uh, without looking at my solution. When you can work these problems straight through top to bottom without consulting um, for any kind of help, then you're in good shape on working this math. Eat them up, cats.